Hello and welcome. It's about 1030. It's the 17th day of June 2022. It's 65 degrees and partially sunny here at Site B. And it is another Friday. So greetings, veterans of the Satine Phoenix Psychic War. It's time to take a look at all the bits and bobs of tabletop role-playing game news that doesn't have anything to do with anything we've talked about before. Sadly, the number one story, though it's thankfully petering off, is the Satine Phoenix nonsense. Um, and I've already made a couple comments about it, which have already got me in trouble. So really, you know, I'm not the person to talk about this. Uh, you know, people who have been directly affected by this probably should be the people who are addressing it, not me. So yeah, it happened. Let's move on. Uh, if anything comes out of this, maybe they'll put a chink in the uh, cult of D&D personality celebrity gamers. Maybe we will start to maybe... Stop investing so much money in these people and so much energy in these celebrity D&D players and just realize, you know what? They're people and people make mistakes. I mean, I read something where like one guy was like, well, I met her once and she was a jerk. So therefore, she's an awful person. And my response was, well, you know what? I met Michael Jackson once and he was like the nicest guy in the world. So sweet, so kind. And look what turns out what was going on there. So don't judge a book on it by its cover. The only people who should be speaking about the Satine Phoenix thing are people who are directly involved. Let's move on to other things that are going on in the tabletop role-playing game world news. D&D &D in a castle is happening. It's con season. It's time to, you know, milk that summer blahs and throw out conventions and D&D-sponsored &D stuff and D&D, non-D&D stuff. And one of the things that's happening is D&D &D in a castle, where there's a castle that's hosting a couple night's worth of D, D. it's kind of like a convention except it's only gonna be you know a bunch of celebrities and proto celebrities dressed up cosplaying and larping and sort of playing D, D. but really it's also sort of gonna be like hey what is it like to run around in this castle and it's three thousand dollars a pop to partake in this now that doesn't count travel and expenses and all the other stuff to get there get back and all those other things the three thousand dollars just covers your time in the castle. Now it's not the first time we've seen D and D in a castle. In fact, we've seen role playing games played in live spots for several times. Usually, it's called LARPing, and a lot of people bag on LARPers, you know, and give LARPers a lot of crap. I love live action role players. Um, I love Vampire the Masquerade live action. I think they're, you know, everyone I've ever met who LARPs has usually been a really great person. So, but LARPers get a lot of slack, just like cosplayers get a lot of slack recently. Oh my God, you've got green hair, you're a horrible person. But literally, we're now watching people pay $3,000 so we can watch them, because it is going to be televised, cosplay and LARP inside a castle. And it's going to be something we have to pay to watch, of course. It's going to be done through YouTube, and it's going to have all these proto-celebrities. So, that's happening. Uh, personally, I don't know, man. I've been to castles in Europe. On the outside, they look great. On the inside, oh my god, the history, the art, the displays, just the idea that you are, you know, walking through two, three thousand years of amazing history. But actually living in a castle, even the ones that have been updated, no, <laughs> I know, I've been, those bathrooms, no, those kids, no, why would anybody want to do that? So, yeah, but, you know, God love them if you can afford it. I mean, I can think of a hundred better things to do with three grand, but whatever. Um, other conventions have happened. Uh, Gary Khan came and went. Uh, Gary Khan, of course, is the convention celebrating Gary Gygax on his birthday, run by his uh, children. Uh, it takes place every year, and it's you know it's basically a bunch of people getting together to play. Now, somebody was going out saying, well, all they play now at Gary Khan is 5e. You know, they've they've given up on the OSR. They want nothing to do with the OSR. Luke Gygax wants nothing to do with the OSR. He's all about 5e now. So in response to that, I went and looked at the Gary Khan site to try and see if I could find a list of the games that were played. And I could only find a small list because it doesn't include the stuff that was just open gaming, and apparently there was a lot, a lot of open gamings. But based upon what little I could find, it looks like, yes, there were people there who represented 5th edition and were playing 5th edition. Maybe 5 to 10% of the games being played there 
War 5th Edition or 5th Edition Adjacent. You want to know what the other 90% of games were? OSR games. You know what kind of games Luke Gygax makes and runs and writes for? OSR. You know what Luke and Gygax plays? Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> he has said, I recognize 5e. I appreciate what 5e has done for the industry, but n- no. You know, I'm still playing Melth in AD&D. So, yeah, I'm sorry for the people who think that, you know, Gary Khan has converted to 5e. No, they're still supporting the OSR. In fact, most of the conventions are open to tons of games. TSR Con, it's going to be all TSR and AD&D stuff. Gen Con will be hundreds of different games, not just 5e. The nominees are up for the Ennies. You know how many 5e games are nominated right now for the Ennies? We haven't had the official breakdown yet, but it's guess what? There's about a thousand games currently being considered for nominations for the Ennies. None of them are 5th edition. A few are 5th edition adjacent, but there's not a single Wizards of the Coast product, again, being nominated for the Ennies this year. Just like last year, or the year before, or the year before or the year before, or the year before. Because you know what? The industry in general recognizes the money and popularity that 5th edition makes, but actually in regards to 5th edition's contribution to the industry, yeah, no, (laughs) not so much. So we got that. What else is going on in the world of tabletop role-playing game news that doesn't have anything to do with Satine Phoenix? Not much, thankfully. Um, We've got a couple stupid lists, you know, uh... Best D&D movie, you look at the list and you're like, dude, how can you not mention Conan? How can you not mention Excalibur or Lady Hawk? Or, so, yeah. Um, thankfully, other than this Teen Phoenix and Con and award season beginning, there's not much. So let's close it up with our continuing S- investigation into Halloween in June and Christmas in June. So when I first put up the Halloween in June video, somebody mentioned Christmas. And sometimes they have the Christmas stuff will even go up before the Halloween stuff, though usually, you know, they're either come up at the same time. So I have been continuing to take a look out to see if Halloween Christmas stuff are up yet. Right now, it does seem that there's still a lot of candy taking up that aisle right now. There's also all the summer stuff like, you know, sunscreen and cheap um, towels and other stuff. But there's a lot of candy. There's a lot of theater candy. So I guess the industry is thinking people are going to start going back to movies again and they're going to sneak in candy again. So we have a lot of M&Ms, a lot of hot tamales, a lot of snow caps, a lot of those other theater candies on that aisle now. But then we also have the big displays of Reese's and M&Ms, which, you know, are vaguely Halloween-ish. As for Christmas, I haven't seen anything yet that really stands out to me as this is a Christmas display. But I'm definitely seeing things that make me go, yeah, this is a Halloween display. Which, of course, leads up to, again, my, my final thought. And that's like, why why bother not? Why invest the energy in stopping it? I mean, you're going to just start it again two months later. Why not just leave the Halloween stuff up all year? You know, it's like your number two source of revenue or number one source of revenue for just, you know, candy and shit. Why not? Um, I have seen not one, not two, but three Three YouTube videos go up in the last 72 hours about people going to haunts. Now, technically, it should be the haunt off-season. It's the summer. They might do a Christmas in July one-day haunt or a Friday the 13th one-day haunt. But most of the full-year haunts should be shut down right now so they can use this time to fix things, create new things, repair stuff, hire new people, look at the new technology, stuff like that. The fact that there's already doing walkthroughs for haunts in June, again, just shows the how important Halloween has become as a revenue building thing. Universal is putting up mazes now for, for Halloween haunt. In fact, the second Halloween haunt, see, Universal understands, you know, Give him what credit was due when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights. The second Halloween Horror Nights was over, they tore down all the mazes, took a couple days off, and then started building the new mazes. Knock Scary Farm, tore down the mazes, took a couple days off. Now they're starting to work on the new mazes. You know, all the big major amusement park center haunts 
are already setting up. Universal is leading ahead. They've already got mazes that are like 80% complete. They're just, you know, experimenting with the tech and the stuff like that and the lines and the wait time and all the psychology and the repairs and all everything that goes into building a haunt so they can get the haunts up and running you know, in September, Octo early October, probably September, you know, we'll see soft walkthroughs in September. So, yeah. So Halloween is a thing now, 365 days a year. I mean, there's no reason for it not to be. So because I love Halloween, because October is my favorite month of the year, because I have been to Knox Scary Farm with the exception of the last three years, pretty much every year of my life since I was nine, um... Well, I mean, you know, I didn't go when I was in college because I wasn't in, in L.A. And I didn't go during um, COVID. And there's a couple other years I missed. But, you know, consistently, I've pretty much gone. So I love Halloween. I love haunts. I don't like the gory haunts, which is, you know, I've talked about in other things. And we'll talk about again as we get to Spooktober. Um, but I like, like, the classic, quirky, traditional, almost quaint and charming haunts. Like, I'm a huge fan of Haunted Mansion. Um, and Knox Scary Farm, especially older Knox Scary Farm, has always been one of my favorites. I, I have been to Universal. You know, I did go to Universal last year for a press thing where uh, – and we could only, you know, because of the person I was with and we, we both deal with um, multiple head issues, we could only do like two things before our brains was burnt out. So basically we spent the rest of the evening just walking around looking at the out, outward stuff. And eating the weird food because we just we knew our heads couldn't take how intense the mazes have become. But when I went to Disneyland and went through a mansion, fine, it was great. So whatever, it's that's the only other news I got. Um, so in closing, yes, the Satine Phoenix thing did happen. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's convention se season. For anybody who thinks that all the OSR players have converted to 5e and Gary Khan and TSR Khan and all these other cons are just all going to be 5e, that is completely incorrect. And I can show you the link that has the list of the games. Uh, and in regards to my other big story about uh, Halloween, yeah, we're going to still follow that. There is another article about religion in D&D. So this is like what? Uh, the 8th or 10th article I've seen pop up about religion in D&D, um, which I don't get. I mean, of all the things you're going to worry about when D&D, religion is usually never the first. And when you do, you know, if you're not running a pre-published world that comes with its own religion, chances are if you're going to make up your own religion, it's going to be based on shit you already know. Right? Norse, Greek, Egyptian, whatever. That's the stuff we know here on Earth. That's the stuff we're exposed to. If we're going to create a fantasy world, our religions for that fantasy world are going to be loosely based upon what we know. <laughs> um, so I don't understand why there's so many articles of religion. Is it just becoming a big thing? Are we? I mean, I know we argue about religion in real life. Are we now arguing about religion in fantasy life as well? Oh, my God. Your religion is Norse based. Well, my religion is Celtic based, so therefore I'm better. Anybody who's North based is like just an ist. Yeah, whatever. Probably. I don't know. It's just for love of the game, you know? For the love of the game. The ridiculousness is just at an all time high. So you either just appreciate the ridiculousness and, or you just choose to walk away. Right now, I'm still appreciating just how stupid this has become. But I know I'm reaching the point where I'm like, you know, maybe it's time to just walk away for a bit because, you know, the threats and the the stuff and the accusations and the the name calling and it's, it, it gets it gets hard after a while. You know, the all the threats I receive and all the insults and, you know, people constantly telling lies about me and my friends that after a while, that's just like, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm not getting paid for this. Which is why you should subscribe to help me at 1000 subs so I can start getting paid for this. Remember... There's no question in your mind from day one. I have said my goal is to get 1,000 subs to get paid for doing this, and I will fucking sell out. So if you appreciate my honesty, consider subscribing and supporting the OGGM. Have a great weekend. We will be back with today's Minecraft run-through. Till then, get the fuck off my land.